excerpt from history and physiography of the most remarkable cases of the earthquake which towards the end of seventeen fifty five shook a great part of the earth by emmanuel kant this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org nature has not spread everywhere in vain a treasure of rarities for contemplation and admiration man who is entrusted with the o economy of the earth not only possesses a capacity but takes a pleasure in learning to know it and through his introspections glorious the creator even the terrible instruments of the visitation of the human species the shakings of countries the raging of the ocean that is violently agitated to its very bottom the volcanoes or mountains that cast out flames summon men to contemplation and are not less implanted in nature by god as a just consequence of constant laws than the other usual causes of incommodity unpleasant consequences which are holden more natural only because we are better acquainted with them the contemplation of such dreadful events is edifying it humbles man by showing him that he has no right or at least that he has lost it to expect convenient consequences only from the laws of nature which god hath ordered and he perhaps learns in this manner to prospect that this arena of his desires ought not equitably to contain the aims of all his views preparation of the nature of the earth in its interior we know pretty completely the surface of the earth when the ampliation is concerned but we have under our feet a world still with which we at present are but little acquainted the chasms of the mountains unfathomable to our plummet the caverns which we meet in the bowels of the mountains the deepest shafts of the mines that we enlarge during centuries are far insufficient to procure us distinct knowledge of the internal structures of the great globe we inhabit the greatest depth to which men have descended does not amount to five hundred fathoms that is the six thousandth part of the distance to the centre of the earth and yet these caverns are still found in the mountains and even all terra firma is a mountain in which in order to arrive but at an equal depth with the bottom of the sea we must go down at least thrice as deep but what nature hides from our eye and from our immediate essays she herself discovers by her effects the earthquakes have revealed to us that the surface of the earth is full of vaults and cavities and that under our feet hidden mines with various labyrinths run everywhere the progress of the history of earthquakes will put this beyond doubt these cavities we have to ascribe to the very same cause which prepared the beds of the seas for it is certain when one is informed of the remains of the ocean's former stay over the whole earth and of the immense heaps of mussels that are found even in the bowels of the mountains of the petrified sea animals which are brought up from the deepest shafts i say when one is in some measure informed of all these he may easily prospect that formerly the sea covered all the land that its stay continued long and is older than the deluge and that the water could not possibly retire otherwise than by its bottom here and there sinking into deep cavities and preparing the same deep basin into which it has run and to whose brims it is still confined while the elevated parts of this sunken crust are become terra firma which is everywhere undetermined by cavities and whose tract is occupied by the steep ridges which under the name of mountains run through the highest parts of the land according to all those directions in which it extends itself to any considerable length all these cavities contain a glowing fire or at least that combustible matter which requires but a small stimulation in order to break out into a violent flame all around it and to shake or even to split the earth above it when we consider the territory of this subterraneous fire in the whole circuit in which it extends we must allow that there are few countries upon the earth which have not sometimes felt its effect the island of iceland in the remotest part of the north is subjected and indeed not seldom to its most violent shocks in england and even sweden there have been a few gentle concussions 
they are however to be found in the southern countries in my opinion in those that lie nearer the equator more frequent and stronger italy the islands of all the seas which lie near the equinoctial line chiefly those of the indian ocean are disturbed by this agitation of their bottom among the latter there is scarcely a single one that has not a mountain which either burns sometimes still or at least did formerly burn and they are just as much subjected to concussion it is a curious precaution if we may believe hubner's account of it that the dutch take in order not to expose the valuable spices of the nutmegs and cloves which they allow to be cultivated on the islands of banda and abonia only to the danger of being extirpated from the earth if a total destruction by an earthquake should happen to those islands by always having a nursery of both plants upon another island at a great distance peru and chile that lie near the line are more tormented by this evil than any other country in the world in the former a day seldom passes without a few small shocks of an earthquake being felt this must not be considered as a consequence of the far greater heat of the sun which acts upon the earth of these countries in a cave that is not quite forty feet deep there is hardly any difference to be distinguished between summer and winter so little is the solar heat able to penetrate the earth to great depths in order to act upon the inflammable matter and to put it into combustion the earthquakes rather accommodate themselves to the nature of the subterranean caverns and these to those laws according to which must have taken place at the beginning the sinking of the uppermost crust of the earth which the nearer to the line have made the deeper and more various bendings inwards whereby these mines that contain the tinder for the earthquakes are grown more extensive and thereby fitter for its incension this preparation by what we have said on the subterraneous passages is of no small importance to the insight of that which will afterwards occur in the wide extending of earthquakes in great countries of the tracks they put in the places where they rage the most and of those where they first take their rise i shall now begin from the history of the earthquake of fifty five itself i understand by it no history of the misfortune which men have thereby suffered no list of cities destroyed and inhabitants buried under their ruins everything horrible which the imagination can represent to itself must be collected in order in some measure to figure to oneself the consternation in which men must be when the earth under their feet moves and is torn with convulsions when everything around them falls to the ground when the water put in violent motion completes the misfortune by overflowing when the fear of death the despair on account of the total loss of all property and finally the sight of others in misery discourage the most steadfast mind such a narrative would be moving it would as it has an effect on the heart perhaps have one likewise on its amendment but i leave this history to more able hands and shall here describe the work of nature only the remarkable natural circumstances which accompanied the dreadful event and their causes of the forerunners of this earthquake i look upon the prelude of the subterranean inflammation that afterwards grew so amazing to be the meteor which we received at locarno in switzerland on the fourteenth october seventeen fifty four at eight o'clock in the morning a warm vapor as if coming out of an oven diffused itself and in two hours turned into a red fog which towards evening occasioned a rain red as blood that when it was caught deposited one-ninth of a reddish gluey sentiment the snow six feet deep was likewise tinged red this purple rain was perceived to extend about twenty german miles in quadratum nay even to swabia on these meteors followed unnatural rains that in three days made the water rise twenty-three inches which is more than falls throughout the whole year in a country of a moderately damp nature this rain continued upwards of fourteen days though not always with the same violence the rivers of lombardy that have their source in the mountains of switzerland as also the rhone swelled and overflowed their banks from this time prevailed in the air frightful hurricanes which raged everywhere furiously 
In the middle of November, such a purple rain fell in Ulm, the disorder in the atmosphere, the whirlwinds in Italy, and the extremely wet weather continued. If we could form a conception of the causes of this phenomenon and of its consequences, we must observe the nature of the ground upon which it happened. All the mountains of Switzerland contain extensive cavities, which without doubt are connected with the deepest subterranean passages. Schutzer numbers nearly twenty gulfs, which at certain times emit wind. If we suppose that the mineral substances hidden in these cavities are mixed, and thereby occasion with those fluidities with which they effervesce, an internal fermentation which may prepare the materials nourishing the fire for that inflammation that in a few days is to break out entirely. If, for instance, we represent to ourselves that acid which is contained in the spirit of nitre, and which nature herself necessarily prepares, how it put in motion either by the afflux of water or by other causes, attack the earth containing iron upon which it fell. These substances must have been heated by their being mixed, and have ejected red warm vapors from the caverns of the mountains, wherewith by the violence of the ebullition the particles of the red earth containing iron were at the same time mingled and carried away this occasioned the gluey red rain as blood which we have made mention the nature of such vapors tend to diminish the expansive power of the air and thereby to make the aqueous exhalations suspended in it run together as also by the attraction of all the humid clouds floating in the ambient atmosphere by means of the natural declivity towards the region where the height of the columns of air is lessened to occasion that violent and constant rain in the countries aforementioned in this manner the subterranean fermentation previously announced by ejected vapors the misfortune which it prepared in secret the achievement of destiny followed it with slow steps the fermentation does not immediately break out into inflammation the fermenting and heating substances in order to produce incension must meet with a combustible oil sulphur petrol or something of the same sort the heating extends itself here and there in the subterraneous passages in the moment when the dissolved combustible substances are heated in the mixture with the others to the degree to catch fire the vaults of the earth are shaken and the decree of the fates is fulfilled the earthquake and the agitation of the water of the first november seventeen fifty five the moment at which this shock happened seems to be the most accurately determined at fifty minutes past nine o'clock a m at lisbon this time exactly agrees with that at which it was perceived in madrid from seventeen to eighteen minutes after ten o'clock when the difference of latitude of both cities is turned into the difference of time and at the same time the waters as well as those that have a visible as those that may have a hidden communication with the ocean are shaken to an astonishing circuit from abo to finland to the archipelago of the west indies few or no coasts were free from it almost at the same time it commanded a tract of fifteen hundred german miles were one assured that the time at which it was felt at Glückstadt on the Elbe might accord to the public accounts be fixed at thirty minutes past eleven o'clock, it would hence be concluded that the agitation of the water took fifteen minutes to come from Lisbon to the coasts of Holstein. At this very time it was likewise felt on all the coasts of the Mediterranean, and its whole extent is not yet known the waters that appear to be deprived of every communication with the sea the sources of mineral water the lakes were at the same time put into an extraordinary commotion in many countries far distant from one another most of the lakes in switzerland and the lake near templin in the marsh some lakes in norway and sweden were put into an undulation far more boisterous than in a storm and the air was at the same time calm both the lakes at neuchatel and of Meinungen, if we may rely upon the accounts ran into hidden cavities but soon returned at this very moment the mineral water of toplitz in bohemia stopped and returned red as blood 
the force with which the water was driven widened its old passage and it thereby acquired a greater afflux the inhabitants of this place might well sing te diem laudamus while those of lisbon uttered quite other tones such is the nature of the incidents that befall the human species the joys of the one and the misfortunes of the other are frequently a common cause in the kingdom of fez in africa a subterranean power split a mountain and poured water out of its gulf near angouleme in france a subterranean noise was heard a deep cavern opened itself on the plain and contained unfathomable water at Grémeno in province a fountain grew suddenly slimy and ran afterwards of a reddish color the surrounding countries gave notice of similar alterations in their sources all these took place at the same minute that the earthquake laid waste to the coasts of portugal here and there during this short term of time a few concussions of the earth were perceived in far distant countries but they almost all happened near the coast at cork in ireland as also at gluckstadt and at several other places that lie near the sea small quakings happened milan is perhaps at the greatest distance from the sea of any place that was this day shaken this morning at eight o'clock vesuvius raged and was quiet towards the time when the concussions happened in portugal end of excerpt from history and physiography of the most remarkable cases of the earthquake which towards the end of seventeen fifty five shook a great part of the earth by emmanuel kant